Thank you so much, Jim. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you, Jen, for inviting me to be here today. I want to start, our, start off by wishing everyone a happy National Park Week. I hope you found a chance to get out and experience your public lands this week. The White House is actually a national park, so technically we're all celebrating a bit right now. I had always wanted to be a national park ranger, and while I didn't quite land that job yet, I'm pretty excited that tomorrow night I get the chance to swear in some junior rangers. All of your kids are welcome to join during the U.S. Army Field Band's virtual concert tomorrow night. I think you can find the link on our website. I, I was happy also to celebrate this morning with the second gentleman. We announced 16 new listings to the Underground Railroad Network to Freedom Program. Our park system is our nation's storyteller. And I'm eager to ensure that these national treasures help tell a more inclusive and accurate story of our nation. This week has brought significant news on climate action and on issues impacting tribal communities. And so I'm honored and grateful to have the opportunity to speak with you and take your questions today. We have no shortage of work ahead. President Biden has set ambitious goals that will ensure America and the world can meet the urgent demands of the climate crisis while empowering our nation's workers and businesses to lead a clean energy revolution. I believe that a clean energy future is within our grasp in the United States, but it will take all of us and the best available science to make it happen. The Interior Department is in a unique position to be a leader in putting our nation on a path to achieve net zero emissions, create good paying jobs, and benefit underserved communities. We have taken steps in just the past few weeks to advance offshore wind proposals, restore balance to management of our public lands and waters, and create jobs, and revitalize land in coal communities. I'll also touch on Interior's work to honor our nation-to-nation -nation relationship with Indian tribes and uphold our trust and treaty responsibilities. I believe, just as President Biden does, that we must engage tribal nations with an all-of-government approach, and one need look no further than the First Lady's visit to the Navajo Nation to speak and hear from tribal leaders and indigenous people. For too long, Indian issues were relegated to the tribal offices within federal agencies. If we're going to make sure that Native American and Alaska Native communities thrive, that tribal sovereignty is respected and strengthened, and if we are truly to repair our nation-to-nation -nation relationships, then that means every federal agency needs to be thinking boldly about our obligations to indigenous peoples. The significance of being the first Native American to serve in the cabinet is not lost on me. As I stand here today at this podium, I am moved by how monumental this week alone has been for indigenous representation. On Monday, I delivered remarks on behalf of the U.S. government at the U.N. Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, where I affirmed our commitment to advancing indigenous people's rights at home and abroad. I talked about how we are putting the full weight of our federal government behind a cross-departmental missing and murdered unit to address the crisis in Indian country. Yesterday, I announced that Interior is moving forward to implement the Not Invisible Act, establishing a joint commission led by Interior and the Department of Justice on reducing violent crime against indigenous peoples. And later today, Domestic Policy Advisor Ambassador Susan Rice and I will convene the first White House Council on Native American Affairs meeting of the Biden-Harris administration. We're wasting no time. We have an ambitious agenda, and so I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and get to work across the cabinet in identifying and supporting tribal equities in the administration's core policy pillars. Last, I come from a family that farms, ranches, and hunts. I've grown up in rural and agricultural communities, and I know what it's like to live in a community that's been left behind. 
These experiences underscore well, I why I believe so deeply in the work that we do at the Interior Department and why I know that we can and will make a difference in the everyday lives of families across this country. And with that, I'm happy to try and answer your question. Nancy, go ahead. Thank you, Secretary Holland. Can you give us an update on the moratorium on uh, fracking on federal lands new contracts? Thank you so much. So uh, the pause on new leases um, is still uh, in effect until we finish a review that is due to the president. Um, that means that the existing leases uh, are still in effect. Uh, we are still issuing permits on those lands. And uh, when, when, when we finish the review, it's an important review. We're talking to many people. We've had a, for a gas and oil forum. Uh, we've talked to many folks across the country. When that review is done, um, then uh, the, us and the president will uh, decide next steps. And can you give us a little more details on how on how that review works, what exactly you're doing, and when you think it'll be concluded? So I can't say exactly when it will be concluded, but as I mentioned, we've had a gas and oil forum already that was virtual. Um, uh, the department folks are talking to governors, to legislators, to folks on the ground. Uh, we're talking to, to, it's mostly like getting everyone's input. We want to make sure that, no, that every voice has a seat at the table. And it's really that, um, as well as using the science. Um, and that's how we'll do the review, and, and it'll go to the president. Go ahead. Uh, we've heard from Republicans in Utah talk about the, their preference for legislation to expand the size of Bears Ears instead of executive action. Do you think there's room for bipartisan work there, or are we probably looking at executive action from this administration? Well, uh, I, I met with those legislators when I was in Utah, the governor, the lieutenant governor, my former colleagues from the House. Um, um, I. I Legislators legislate, and uh, I think they should move ahead with legislation if that's what they want to do. Um, we will get the report done for the president and uh, send it to the White House, and it will really be the president's decision. The Antiquities Act is a presidential, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all him. Uh, he can decide. Um, what I did when I went to Utah was make sure that, again, every voice uh, was at the table. We talked to ranchers and farmers. We talked to children uh, who use uh, those lands and um, outdoor, you know, economy folks. And so we're, we want to make sure that we include every voice. And, and that's the report that will go to the president, and he'll decide. Can I ask on a different topic really fast? Yeah. We've, we've heard so many tribes this year talk about really struggling with mental health issues for teens. I mean, a lot of communities around the country, but just teens struggling with, with depression during this pandemic. Is that one an issue that you guys are addressing in this domestic council? I can't, uh, this is our first meeting. So uh, what we're really going to do initially is uh, assign committees to each um, cabinet secretary. Um, and it will be up to them to look at the topics. Of course, we care deeply about this issue. Um, it's, it's one that I know uh, a lot of people are suffering from. So I appreciate you mentioning that. And um, once we're able to um, get a, you know, a clear path on where we're going with the council, uh, we'll certainly let everyone know. Mario, you got to be the last one, but we'll, we'll invite her back. Thanks, Jen. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, just piggybacking, a couple of questions, just piggybacking off of your comments at the top about national parks. Mm -hmm. Any reason why they're still at reduced capacity when we know that social distancing outside is uh, is the best possible uh, you know case for COVID? Well, let's. First of all, I'll say um, we are taking every possible precaution to make sure that we are keeping people safe. I, I don't ever want to jump the gun on this. We know there's a lot of vaccinations that are happening. Uh, yes, our country is safer since President Biden has been in office. We're just not quite there yet. Um, they'll continually monitor that situation. We want everyone to keep their masks on, to social distance, and, and I appreciate the question. We can look into it and absolutely get back with you. And more business related, um, what's your plan for restarting the sale of oil and gas leases in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico? 
Once we are, uh, once we, so existing leases are already happening. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's not a, a, a moratorium on, even on new leases, they're just a pause. So um, when, we, when we have the review done, um, what I'll say is right now, permits are still being issued. So, and there's still ongoing leases that are happening. Thank you, Secretary Hill, and thank you for joining us, and you're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Happy National Park Week. National Park Week.